my head didn't hurt anymore. Come to think of it, neither did the rest of my body. The world seemed to sway back and forth, even though I was flat on my back. Everything looked fuzzy around the edges one moment and sharply in focus the next. That was when something alarming occurred to me. Where in the hell am I? I lay on a large bed, staring up at a massive painting that spanned a domed roof. In the painting, pudgy babies surrounded a young man with a thick brown beard. The bearded man reached his hand across an expanse of sky, just shy of touching the outstretched hand of a naked man who reposed on a strip of grass. It looked vaguely familiar, but I couldn't place where I'd seen it. I sat up and shook my head woozily. I feel strange, a familiar voice said. I yelped and jumped off the bed, twisting and turning to see who spoke. Another me stood on the other side of the bed, eyes wide, except this me had blue skin and pointy black horns about three inches long protruding from his forehead. Cain! I drew upon my seraphim powers, ready to blast him. Nothing happened. I should have felt aether flowing into me, but I couldn't even sense a hint of magical power in the air around me. So I switched to my infernal skill set and tried to spawn into demon form. A wisp of soul essence drifted from me and connected to my blue clone. He frowned. Justin? I frowned back. Holy shit, Kalesh? He nodded. We are not in Kansas anymore. Understatement of the year. I held out my hands and rubbed my fingers together. I pinched my arm and felt pain. Then I walked over and put a hand on Kalesh. He felt as warm and alive as I did. Am I unconscious? We are not in your subconscious, he said. We are somewhere else. He walked to one of the windows and looked out. His eyes grew wide. Oh no, we're in terrible danger. The city outside the arched windows looked as if someone had copied ancient Greek architecture and then supersized it. White marble buildings with columns, domes, and even pyramids dominated the cityscape. Buildings of opaque crystal broke the monotony casting rainbows where the sun struck them. A wide avenue ran from one of the crystal buildings to a plaza ringed by towering marble statues. The statue of a bearded man stood in the center, fist upraised to the heavens. It was the only figure I didn't recognize. The others I knew all too well. Posthenide wore a helmet over his oval head, a cape draped about his square shoulders and blocky body. He stared at the center statue, arms crossed, face brooding. Zahn stood to his right, hands clasped behind his back, shoulders straight, as if standing at attention. The arachnid demigod, Araxus, was next, crouched on eight legs as if either bowing or ready to pounce. Tall and curvy, Coriandrel stood to her right, hair lifted from her shoulders as if flowing in a breeze and outside the circle was the outcast. Unlike the others, Xanos knelt, head bowed, hair hiding her face. That meant the statue in the middle was Kavazal, father of the Apocryphon. After their banishment to the Abyss, Xanos had tricked the others into killing Kavazal. She'd been exiled to the Fringe, a ring of mountains and intense gravitational forces around the edge of the prison. From there, she'd launched a plot that would eventually free her, thanks to little old me. Now all the Apocryphon but Xanos were dead. Coriandrel, Posthenide, and Araxos had been murdered by their own mother, Eve. I'd killed Zahn with stolen Apocryphon powers and then banished Xanos to the small realm where Eve lived.